Chance and friends, making tracks to great destinations. to collect the fireworks from the depot. James was overjoyed. Thomas wasn't happy at all. But I wanted to collect the fireworks, Thomas pouted. The fat controller chose me because I'm as red as a rocket and twice as grand. James steamed proudly across the countryside. Bryce is the best, Bryce is the best, he hummed happily to himself. He was having a wonderful day. Thomas was still upset when he arrived at the shunting yards. Bother James, he crouched, and he biffed the trucks crossly around the yard. James arrived at the depot. He was very excited. The wagons were all ready for him, filled safely to the top with fireworks. James was coupled up with the precious cargo and he steamed away. Thomas shunted the last truck crossly into place. The trucks were glad that job was finished. James happily steamed along. He was thinking about the fireworks. He was imagining all the sparkles, flashes and shooting stars when suddenly James ran to a halt. I will have to go and call for help, said his driver. Thomas puffed back into Natford Station as Gordon was letting off his passengers. Children and grown-ups from all over the island had come to see the fireworks. Seeing the children cheered Thomas up, but the fat controller looked concerned. James is broken down. 
he said. You must collect him, Chomish, and bring him back, or the firework display will be cancelled. Oh, no, cried Thomas. Then all the children will be sad. And he set off to collect James. Thomas puffed across the countryside. Even with his light on, Thomas knew he had to be very careful. Thomas found James broken down on the track. Hello, busted boiler, teased Thomas. You don't look very useful now. James was upset. But when Thomas got behind James, he couldn't see ahead. You will have to look out for me, said Thomas. But James was cross. You said I wasn't useful, he pouted. But if the fireworks don't get to Knapford Station, puffed Thomas, the display will be cancelled. James didn't want the children to be sad, so he agreed to look out for Thomas. And they set off together. straight and clear, James called out, Go faster! And Thomas did. Soon they were working happily together and making good time. The fat controller checked his watch. There was still no sign of Thomas or James. It's very late, he thought. It's almost the children's bedtime. Even Gordon was worried. I'll have to cancel the display, said the fat controller. So the disappointed children started to board the coaches. At last they could see the signal lights. The signal had turned red. Thomas and James stopped. Why would the signal be red? Maybe a passenger train is coming through, puffed Thomas. Gordon must be taking the children back, cried James. Thomas and James were very upset. We're here, they cried, and sounded their whistles as loudly as they could. But no one could hear them. The children were all on board. Gordon was ready to depart. Then Thomas had a bright idea. Send up a rocket, he told his driver. So his driver carefully lit a rocket. He stood well back as it whooshed into the sky. The rocket burst into stars. A sparkling dragon, cried the fat controller. It must be Thomas and James. Stop, Gordon, he said. The firework display is back on. The junction signal turned to green, and Thomas and James were soon on their way. James and Thomas were soon at the station. The children cheered. Good work, Thomas, cried James happily. And good work, James, agreed Thomas. Good work, both of you, said the fat controller. That night, Thomas and James watched the fireworks together. I think we are both useful engines, said James proudly. But we are most useful when we work together, puffed Thomas.